Hey Sopranos fans, welcome to another episode here on Bully Whispers, and we are here today to discuss whether or not Dr. Melfi should have told Tony about her assault. Now, before getting started, I'd like to address the fact that we all know that Melfi was more than just assaulted. However, the R word is the sort of thing that can get a video flagged, and that's why I will be using the word assaulted instead. So in this episode, we will discuss whether or not Melfi should have told Tony about her assault by first looking at it from the audience's perspective, specifically what we wanted, why we wanted it, and the advantages of our point of view that must be acknowledged, before moving on to Dr. Melfi's point of view, specifically her practical and ethical reasons for not telling Tony, then ending with whether or not I think it was a good decision, and this being more of a discussion episode, I will be asking you some questions along the way, with the first being, what were you thinking for the first time while watching that episode? For me, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, I was sitting there saying, tell him, tell him. But this is an easy stance to take due to the fact that, as the audience, we knew he did it. We saw him. This eliminates any sort of burden of proof type objections and supposedly offers a moral justification for doing so, but that's something we'll touch on later. With that out of the way, the question then becomes not just why did we want her to tell, because she did tell, the cops, her ex, her therapist, she told plenty of people. But why did we want her to tell Tony specifically? And the answer to that is simple. We knew what would happen. I'ma call a couple of hard pipe hitting niggas to go to work on the homes here with a pair of pliers and a blowtorch. And that's what we wanted to see. Personally, and let me know if you disagree, I think this assault happening to Melfi would elicit a much more extreme response from Tony than anyone other than Meadow or Carmella, maybe Irina. For example, if that had happened to Janice, Tony would have definitely been mad, but like with the Russians, I think part of his response would have been due to some sense of familial obligation. Huh? What do you mean, what? They slapped my sister around. Mm. I'm gonna have to get payback. Similarly, and I'm sure a lot of people would disagree with this, I think you could say the same thing about his mother, Livia. Now, obviously, what happened to Melfi was much worse than what happened to Janice, so I think the ratio of rage versus obligation would be much more on the rage side, but obligation would still be a part of it, whereas for Melfi, it would be complete and unhinged rage, and Melfi knew this too. Who could I sick on that son of a bitch to tear him to shreds? Quick side note, we saw what Tony did to a high-ranking New York guy for just harassing Meadow, can you imagine what he would have done to some random cashier if he assaulted Meadow like he assaulted Melfi? Anyways, I find it interesting that she worded it that way because she is smart enough to know that she wouldn't have to sick Tony on him. All she would have to do is tell Tony that it happened and he would take it from there, which would theoretically give her some sense of plausible deniability, but that's not how she thinks. So, why did she not tell Tony, and was this a good choice? In order to evaluate that, we must look at all the potential practical and ethical reasons, and even though I don't think the practical have anything to do with it, it wouldn't be a true evaluation without mentioning them, so let's take a second and start there. As far as potential practical reasons, there are only two, with the first being she's worried about getting into trouble. Now this would be a fairly reasonable concern. Jesus Rossi turns up murdered, and when looking into it they see that he was arrested and let go, so that may point some suspicion towards Melfi. If they looked any further, they would realize that one of her clients is the Don of New Jersey, which would put even more of a focus on her. If they did somehow attach the murder to Tony, then she would have to rely on the plausible deniability aspect, which begs the question, if you were on a jury, would you buy that defense by civil court standards, not criminal? That means not necessarily beyond a reasonable doubt, but rather what just more than likely happened. The second is that she might be worried that this would put her in Tony's debt, so to speak, and that she might be expected to return a favor. Anyways, like I said, I don't think those had anything to do with it, so let's move on to her real reason, which was ethical. Civilization. Oh, don't worry. I'm not going to break the social compact. For those of you who don't know, social contract theory deals with what rights people had to give up in order to live in a society. It was popular for centuries. There are countless versions of it, and this would be perfectly permissible in quite a few of them. That being said, since Melfi is American and the United States came from the British tradition, she is more than likely referring to John Locke's social contract, in which case she is correct. In fact, according to Locke's social contract, pretty much the only right you have to give up in order to form society is the right to vigilante justice, 
which cuts right to the core of one of Melfi's contentions with Tony since season one. But I continue to ask the question, why do you think you, Anthony Soprano, always has to set things right? And explains why I think not telling Tony was the right choice for Dr. Melfi. It's consistent with her character. In that session, Tony was dealing with a high school soccer coach who assaulted one of the girls on the team, which does add a bit to the parallel since they both involve assaults. In a statement that later proves to be darkly ironic, Melfi tries to steer Tony towards the path of legal justice, which Tony laughs at. The judicial system has gotten much better in dealing with sexual predators. Oh yeah, let's impeach him. Melfi, of course, pushes the issue, and it's here that we can see not only how close the parallels are, but how consistent Melfi's character is. I'm interested in why you feel punishing this man falls upon you. Well, it sure doesn't fall upon you. But meanwhile, that employee of the month cocksucker is back on the street. No one's going to stop him, you? It's very easy to take the ethical or logical high road when things don't affect you and you can look at them from an objective standpoint. But when something does affect you and everything has gone as wrong as it could, like with Melfi, maintaining that same stance is something entirely different. The fact that Melfi could do so shows a quality and consistency of character that I feel made her not telling Tony the right choice, not only from her point of view, as if she was a real person, but from the writer's point of view as well. Now, before wrapping this up, I do have some questions that I'm curious to hear your thoughts on. First, if Coach Hauser had gotten away with it like Jesus Rossi did, do you think Tony would have engaged in some vigilante justice then? Obviously, if it had been Meadow instead of Allie, he would have never even considered calling the cops, but since he did and they failed, would he have went after the coach himself? Second, for those of you who've seen the Power Law 22 episode from the 48 Laws of Power series, what connections, if any, do you see with this episode? And lastly, of course, do you think Dr. Melfi should have told Tony, and why or why not? Well, thanks for watching this episode here on Bully Whispers. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you at the next score.